Pastor Joy Armstrong, and I'm the visiting pastor here at Our Saviors. And on behalf of Children, Youth, and Family Ministry Director, Jennifer Hamilton, Administrative Assistant Katie Keller, the production team, and the entire congregation, it is my joy to welcome you to worship this morning on AM 1230 WKLK Radio, Cable Access Channel 7, and Our Savior's YouTube channel, live here in person, on our parking lot on FM 98.1 and Facebook Live. We are live. We are alive. I pray this time will feed your soul with God's word, open your heart to God's love, and inspire your service as God's hands to lovingly, inclusively, and unconditionally live our Savior's mission to know Christ and to have others know him.
Today's gospel combines a saying that makes many of us uncomfortable with a story we find comforting Jesus. Comforting. Jesus saying on divorce is another of his rejections of human legislation in favor of the original intent of God's law. Jesus' rebuke of his disciples who are fending off the children should challenge us as well. What does it mean to receive the kingdom of God as a child does? Stand for the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. Let us confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. God, our comforter, like lost sheep, we have gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. 
We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. By the gift of grace in Jesus Christ, God makes you righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of your sins. Amen. Let us pray together. Sovereign God, you have created us to live in loving community with one another. Form us for life that is faithful and steadfast and teach us to trust like little children that we may reflect the image of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
Our reading this morning is from Psalm 8. Please read responsibly. The assembly's portion is in bold print. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic, how majestic is, is your, your name, name in all, all the earth. earth. You, whose glory is chanted above the heavens and out of the mouths of infants and children, you, you have, have set up a fortress, fortress against, against your, your enemies, enemies to silence, silence the, the foe and, and avenger. When I consider your heavens, the works of your fingers, the moon and, and the, the stars, stars you have, you set, have set in their, in their courses. courses, what are mere mortals that you should be mindful of them? Human, Human beings, beings that you should, you should care, care for, them. for them. Yet you have made them little less than divine. With, With glory, glory and, and honor, honor you, you crown, crown them. them. You have made them rule over the works of your hands. You have, you have put, put all, all things under, under their feet. feet. All flocks and cattle, even, even the, the wild beasts of the, of the field, field the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and, and whatever, whatever passes along the paths of the sea. sea. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in, in all, all the, the earth. earth. We stand for the reading of the gospel. From Mark chapter 10, verses 13 through 16. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, let the little children come to me do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. As usual, we cannot invite children up here, and so we are going to do a visual children's sermon this morning because it's the first day of Sunday school. And uh, all the children in Sunday school have received one of these bags. And in the bag is enough for the whole month of October, and there's uh, all kinds of fun things in here, which I won't take out because then I'll play. But this is what we're doing for Sunday school. This is what we put together last Sunday after church. Now I asked Bill to come up and help me this morning. Um, he's gonna be the teacher. I get to be the kid. You ready? Ready. I got my script. God separated the land and the sky. Now you can add shaving cream clouds to create sky. Do I say it again? <laughs> add shaving cream clouds to create sky. Oh, wait. You gotta take the cap off there. Thanks. I'm a kid. Yeah, you're a kid, yeah, okay. Ooh, there's Sky. And God created our atmosphere and weather. Gotta wait for God to be ready. Well, I lost my food coloring. There we go. No, we don't. 
go. <clears throat> well, there was supposed to be food coloring in here. Remember, God took six days for this, so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I don't know where the food coloring is, so it was supposed to be blue, and I was going to make it drop in there and be rain. So, if I find it later, I'll run over here and do it. Use your imagination. So that is so we the got rain. Without rain, <laughs> we have rain. So that is the first lesson uh, with for this Sunday without the blue full and food coloring. And the prayer is um, I am going to say thank you God for this earth and you're going to say wow God only you're going to say wow God <laughs> let us pray thank you God for your blessings of earth and creation wow, wow God. God all right thank you <laughs> just wait till next time Let us pray. Loving God, bless our hearing and my speaking this morning that we may speak for your kingdom and your love for all the children in the world. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Creator and Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. Amen. I chose this morning to read, to preach from the children's story that is in the last part of the message, since this is the first day of Sunday school, as I've said, and because my heart is always with children. Jesus said, let the little children come to me, do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly, I tell you, Whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. Now, we are used to hearing the gospel in pieces. You know, one Sunday we hear part of Mark, part of Mark. So I will tell you that this is a narrative that continues from Mark chapter 9. And in chapter 9, the disciples are talking about who, which of them is the greatest. And Jesus takes a little child and places a little child among them and speaks whoever wants to be first. Want, whoever wants to be first wants to be last, needs to be last. Now in today's gospel, the parents are bringing their children to Jesus. And they're not all dressed up and cute like it shows on the front of your bulletin. They've been following Jesus for a while, and the children have gotten like children do. They've gotten dirty, and maybe some of them are ill. But they're not welcomed by the disciples. Now remember, in the verse I just said, Jesus said, welcome the little children. So Jesus gets indignant. He gets mad, and he says, let the little children come to me. Sometimes I feel sorry for the disciples in Mark because they always seem to get it wrong. Sometimes I recognize myself in the disciples. Jesus' response to the disciples this morning tells us the proper way to be a disciple, a true disciple. His response reminds us to welcome little ones. To welcome children reminds us that you and I although we probably wouldn't claim the name as a child are children of God when we speak of little children we're speaking of little children in between children big children older children we're all children of God one of my favorite hymns 
is children of the Heavenly Father. The first verse, children of the Heavenly Father, safely in his bosom gather, nestling bird nor star in heaven, such a refuge heir was given. It's talking about us, children of God. The third year of seminary is internship year. And that year, I was assigned to go to Oaks, Oklahoma. Oaks, Oklahoma is a small town, and it's a Cherokee town. Unlike reservations, the Cherokees live on land allotments. So part of that allotment became a town. I had never been to Oklahoma before, and I left at the end of August because everything begins in September. And the farther south I drew from Minnesota, the warmer it got, the muggier it got. But soon I was off the interstate and on the small roads following the arrows to Oaks. Now this was a time before cell phones and there was no voice to tell me which way to go. So I was frantically every once in a while stopping and checking out the map. Finally arrived at the village, and like most small villages in rural America, the first place on the left was the general store. And of course, there were all kinds of cars there, and I parked and got in and asked where the church was, and I'll never live this down in Oaks for as long as I live, and they said, it's right over there. And it was. But across from the general store was the Senior Citizens Center. And I love Senior Citizens Centers because they sometimes have the best food in the world and the, everybody gathers, including non-seniors, especially in Oaks. Now, Thursdays was the day when we had fried chicken and mashed potatoes. My daughter will tell you I'm a fan of mashed potatoes. She always makes them for me. And that next down the road a bit was the church, and it was in the same side. And it was one of those old, I don't know if any remember the old army chapels. They had moved it from an army post, and they used that for their chapel. The interesting part about the chapel was that if you were going to preach there, you had to be prepared because the pews were not nailed down and were usually filled with eager little children from the children's homes next to the church, which was why I was sent to Oaks. These children came down from the mountains, some of them from abusive families, and they came to the children's homes, there were little houses all around, and they went, came so that they could go to school, which was right across the street from the children's place and the church. And um, that's the story that I want to tell you this morning about one of the children there. Now, in the church, we had a youth group, and it was quite a large youth group, and we did youth group things, and we did crafts and that. And one spring day, pastor brought in a little girl named, and this is not her real name, named Leona. And he sat her down next to me, and he said, Leona doesn't talk about anything, anyone. She doesn't speak. But it's not a physical thing. She just won't speak. Well, that youth group and the other children always included Leona in their play, along with me. You must remember, I was much younger then, and I could do some things I can't do now. And they seemed to understand her. And summer came, and it was decided by the pastor that I and one of the supervisors at the group home would bring the youth group to the youth ELCA confirmation camp in southern Oklahoma. 
Now, we all got on the bus one morning, and if you've ever ridden on a bus with kids, you know that's a fun time. And we got to the camp, and the kids were kind of hesitant about getting off the bus because they were going to be the only group of mostly Cherokee children. Well, we had five days there, and Leona would, would go to everything with the kids, and, and she would make crafts and everything, but she would not speak. So the second day we were there came the big announcement. If you've ever been to camp or had kids in camp, you know that the night before everybody leaves is skit night. Talent night. Every group is supposed to come up with some sort of skit or talent or something together. So that evening, the kids and I went off and we sat around a picnic table and we discussed what we were going to do. And then some of the kids wandered off and they came back and they said, Pastor Joy, would you mind if we just plan something on our own? And I said, sure, go ahead. That's OK. So we had fun the next three or four days, and we went swimming, and we did crafts. And in the afternoons, we relaxed in the heat. There was no air conditioning. Then we gathered that night for the talent show. And there was lots of laughter and lots of kids running around and there was fun and there was popcorn and it was a beautiful evening. It was a good night to celebrate our week at camp. Finally, it was the group from Oaks turn to do their thing. And they filed on the little stage in the center. They put Leona. And then they grouped around her. Not and not, we could all see them all. They didn't close the circle, but they circled around her. And the piano began to play. And they began singing. They all began singing. I don't remember to this day what they sang, but I do remember that Leona sang with them. And they were all smiling at me. Surprise, Pastor Joy. Leona sang with them. Leona's story stays with me all these years because, yes, she sang, but more importantly, it took the loving group of children surrounding her to get her to do that. They accepted Leona for who she was, and they taught her to sing. Jesus says, whoever welcomes me welcomes a child in my name. In the past, my heart was troubled, and I was alone, wandering. And I came to a church and entered there and was welcomed. My hand was held. Welcome. Welcome home. Leona was welcomed. It didn't matter if she didn't talk. We could do things together. But she sang. And the last day before I left, she came up to me and she said, goodbye. It's a powerful gift we have, this gift of welcoming. Welcoming the little child, the young child, the middle-aged child, the older children. All of us are God's children. And we are always welcomed in Jesus' name. I know that you are a welcoming community. 
And I know that you believe that you are children of God. So remember, wherever you are, it is our work, as Martin Luther says, as we leave the communion table, to go out and love our neighbor and welcome them. Amen. stand as we confess our faith, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. 
He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of God be with you all. Please share the peace as we are able in this pandemic phrase. of announcements this morning. This is the first Sunday of the month and it is Food Shelf Sunday and the basket is back there for you to help out the food shelf. If you have Sunday school kids or you're now feeling like a child, they are a small child, they are in the back, sign up using the form in the narthex. If you're looking for information about church or events, be sure to check our website. Katie, uh, Katie, uh, Katie in the office updates it. And there are tons of great resources there for you. Um, if you don't have access to the website, uh, call Katie and she would be glad to tell you what's going on. Thank you. The prayer response this morning for the prayers of intercession is how, how majestic is your name. It's from the psalm that we heard read this morning. Let us pray. May children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Merciful God, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. O Lord, our Lord. Holy One, you have raised up faithful leaders throughout history. Empower those discerning a call to ministry and all seminarians that they may continue to be formed for the sake of the gospel. O Lord, our Lord, you have established a diverse and beautiful creation. Help us to revive and care for this endangered land. Cultivate in us a sense of wonder for the world you create. O Lord, our Lord, you desire for us not to be alone, to live in community with one another, strengthen relationships between nations and people, that we all might celebrate and support one human family. O Lord, our Lord, You share in our experiences and struggles. Bless all who live with any men mental or physical disability. Inspire creative communities, spaces, and environments that are accessible and hospitable to all your people. O oh Lord, our Lord, You have established and nurtured relationships that extend beyond those gathered here today. Bless members who can no longer travel to worship with us and remind us of the continued role in this community of faith. Lord, O oh Lord, our Lord. Amen. 
In this moment of silence, we lift up to you those who are in our hearts. O oh Lord, our Lord, Gracious God, you promise eternal life to all your children. Thank you for the people of faith who have gone before us. Strengthen our trust we have in you, O Lord, our Lord. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please stand for the communion litany. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, so that in the joy of the Holy Spirit we praise your name. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body given for you do this for the remembrance of me again after supper he took the tank took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, this is the blood of my covenant shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. All who are hungry and thirst, come. In the fish crackers, we have a reminder of God's love and forgiveness for the youngest of our assembly. They are a gift that reminds of the same grace, the same story, alive in Jesus' gift to us. The table is ready. You are welcome. Come.
Lord of life, in the gift of your body and blood, you turn the crumbs of our faith into a feast of salvation. Send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness in the abundance of your love. Amen. Receive the blessing. People of God, you are Christ's body, bringing new life to a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, the living word dwells in you. Thanks be to God.